In video two, we take a deeper look at some of the remediation strategies that landholders have had to implement post landslips. Some of these are really large scale and some of these are really low cost things that most people will be able to do on site to stabilise landslips. It's been an amazing journey of how, um, how we can remediate landslides and how we can work to hopefully prevent them from happening in the future. Um, some of that has been using technology like drone seeding or um, earth moving machinery and hydro mulching, but it's also using the power of nature, looking at plantings um, of particularly species that have a range of different root systems. One of the first things that we recommended was for people to plant a grass seed, uh, rye in winter or millet in summer. Those, those grasses, though they're not native, they don't reproduce via seed, so it's not, you're not creating another weed issue. Getting, getting that grass growing uh, will help to capture the soil, so that, you know, hoping to prevent further loss. Um, but also because it dies off, um, you know, it's just an annual, and so then that breaks down and start and can kickstart the carbon cycle so we can start slowly building topsoil again. We've used a special uh, fertilizer in some sites where uh, that has some of the microbiomes that um, that healthy soils like uh, along with nutrients and everything so so that I think has been helpful as well using water crystals of course uh, and mulching heavily. We um, discovered this landslip after the rain event of February 2022 all this land eroded on one night and we discovered it while we were driving across the valley a couple of days later. Oh, yeah, you looked back at it. We looked and, back at oh it. My goodness. We hadn't seen it. Um, it's quite devastating. Um, but also the environmental cost of all that soil being washed away and all those trees just down the creek. Also that idea of um, all this land that I was looking after um, was now, not only was I just looking after it, I was having to start again. I've been involved in earthworks for 30 years and when we came to the north coast uh, to see the extent of damage, um, the number of slips and just the sheer volume of soil that's been moved off the landscape was staggering. These areas are very notoriously hard to remediate. Uh, access is poor, drainage is poor, the material itself is uh, co-mingled soft clays, topsoil, rock, um, debris and timber, so they're very difficult to work on. So when you look at a landslip, um, you'll see a lot of uh, erosion gullies, a lot of fluting, a lot of weeds, a lot of subsoils exposed, uncontrolled drainage and a lot of erosion down into the waterways. You really need to come into these landscapes and reshape them to control the drainage so that you can you know, minimise erosion and sedimentation. Um, you need to be able to provide access so that landholders can actually get in here and plant these uh, batters out and, and do the weeding and, and monitor and, and do all the things that you need as a, a responsible landholder. You also need to uh, provide flat angles or flat batters that material like hydro mulch and revegetation can, can stay on and not be undermined. It's disturbing at the start but once it's established it is a much more stable landform. Our, our ethos has been around having the problems be part of the solutions. So by thinking about how to build resilience into our landscape, we've got to think about what our risks are. Uh, so, you know, we, we, there is fire risk, so we don't want to be increasing that risk by the choice of trees that we're using. Uh, we have landslide risk, and so we need to be doing things to reduce though, that risk. We've used the, the branches to create brush swales across the contour. So just laying them, laying the branches, we weaving them in so we get it as tight as possible, using star pickets to, um, to hold that there. Um, it also captures sediment, so we're, we're holding the soil back on our hillside rather than losing it and, and having an increase of erosion. It's holding moisture, so the plants have more moisture in the soil, so they are able to survive through dry times more readily. We've got springs where um, that, that constant wet soil was a risk when it was still continuing to be very wet. Uh, we've tapped those springs using polypipe, just digging a little hole and sticking the polypipe in, creating a little dam wall there, and then that's been drip feeding into buckets. So then we've got water on site to be able to water the trees. And so it's an example of, of using a risk to be part of a solution so getting those trees watered uh, you know they're going to grow a lot quicker and and then be sucking the moisture out of the soil and holding the 
the hillside together, creating that healthy regolith um, that is, is what helps create stability in soil and particularly on steep slopes. With these big boulders, they're obviously a risk to our dwellings below us. And so we've used rock splitting equipment, um, just chisels and uh, a drill. And you tap the, the chisels in and create these smaller rocks that we can then use in our drains to help slow the flow. So we're turning a, a risk into a solution. Uh, we then got involved with Richmond Land Care. Since then, we have had earthworks come in and bulldoze and excavate um, thousands of cubic tonnes of soil back up the hill. They've flattened out the land. We've had hydro mulch thrown all over the uh, most of the land slip, and um, currently we're planting trees. So we're going to stabilise these slopes with hydro mulch um, today. Uh, we're going to spray a hectare of, um, of binder and cellulose and fertiliser and native seed um, cover crop. Once this material goes down we should get a, a green shoot in about six to eight weeks and then a year or two later we'll get the native grasses coming through. But in between we can plant uh, tube stock and those guys can grow up to a metre a year. So we're hoping to see a lot of ground cover and greenery behind us here in 12 to 18 months. There were some real positives that came out of the 2022 flood, as hard as that is to believe. There was a lot of innovation and innovative approaches to documenting the damage caused by the flood. So one of the things that I have used quite a bit is the drone footage that was taken of the landslips and the impacts upon our rivers. And that sort of information is absolutely essential for us to manage that damage into the future and to understand what those parts of the landscape that are most vulnerable and also importantly to determine how much damage has been done. I think there's a, a lot of potential for that footage combined with LIDAR to predict where landslips might occur in the future. That more precise prediction is really important for people to feel safe in their own homes. The other thing that drones have been doing across our landslides is to actually directly seed into those landslides. Really important to get that vegetation cover with the native species that should be there. And I think that that one thing that we do need to try to research is what species are going to be the really important ones for us to use on landslip. So in different parts of the catchment, different, different characteristics are really important. So on these steeper areas, we've been reforesting. In some of the areas where water concentrates, we might use some other techniques to help build resilience into our systems. A lot of the lower catchments in these valleys and in the Lismore catchment more broadly, the stream banks were totally washed away. So a lot of the reforestation work that had been done, land care groups had spent decades working hard, growing seedlings, planting them in parts of the landscape only to have those washed away. So part of the challenge there is looking at how to build more resilient forestry systems within those very dynamic parts of the catchment. So what we need to do is link those with more stable parts of the catchment. So it's not enough just to do a narrow band of, of vegetation along a stream bank. We need to think of it as an engineering structure. We need to tie it in to the parts of the catchment that are less vulnerable. And that helps bind it together. So what we need is we need a coherent approach to really dealing with those risk factors and making them stable. One of the things that we need to think about as well is the costs of doing that versus the benefits. So while reforestation can be expensive, the cost of losing large areas of our most productive landscapes, the, the impact of the debris and the soil loss over time for landholders, the impact of that, that material moving down the catchment and starting to block up our river systems so that next rainfall events actually become worse because there's much more sediment in the system and therefore there's less space for water and therefore our flood levels rise. So we need to think about making strategic investments at those really critical parts of our catchments and understanding that if we can do that well, we can help to manage risks into the future, we can help maintain productivity 
and we can help to reduce the costs and the damage of subsequent rainfall events. Having a landslip, how has that has that changed your land use at all? Or we have three hectare of landslip in total, um, and a lot of that was planted previously, and there was some pasture that we lost as well. Um, all the works that have happened, we've since fenced, so it's all electric fence because we don't want the cows coming in and um, eating the trees that we've planted. All our hard work. Mm. But it's also changed how I think um, about this land and the greater plan and over time, I don't want to remove the cows really quickly, but over time we're going to plant more and more trees, uh, have less pasture and generally have less cows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see the trees as the asset? The trees are absolutely the asset mm -hmm. um, and also after this experience having the land slip, we want to be prepared mm -hmm. uh, for any future um, rain events. Mm -hmm. um, we want the property to be in the best um, position to hold the soil. Okay, so when a landholder has vulnerable land that they suspect that, that will be a land slip on or is, is likely to have a land slip, um, they should seek professional advice if doing any major earthworks for structures or roads um, on, that, on that landform. They should also encourage vegetation on these steep lands, um, have it fenced off from stock, let the ground cover re-establish, get deep-rooted trees um, growing so that you're giving yourself the best chance of removing water from the soil profile and stitching it together with roots um, and providing you know, some kind of structural um, support for that steep soil. So I'm involved in earthworks to reshape these slips to prepare them for planting but you can also engage land care to provide um, natural processes and, and software engineering solutions with planting and fencing to uh, you know, minimise the risk of, of landslip on your property. Trying to fix this landslip was um, near impossible and I didn't enjoy coming down here at all. Mm. Uh, it was hard to look at. Yeah. Um, but now it's like we've just got a whole new space. We've got grass area that one day we're going to, we'll camp there. We're planting all these trees, we're planting the trees that we want to, things that are local to this area, things that are going to feed the bats and the bees and the birds. Um, we have plans to um, work on the waterways and make them more um, flood resilient. And uh, we're down here all the time. We have to remember that it takes a long time to fix a issue that can be created overnight and many of these issues that are created overnight are created by us. But nature takes a lot longer than that to heal. So one night of damage will take decades or even hundreds of years to rehabilitate. And we shouldn't stress over the fact that it's going to take that long. It's a continuing process. And I think you just have to work with that process. We might not, we won't see that process through. It continues after we are gone, but that's fine. We're part of the process. We are not the, the final point of that process.